What's up, everybody? Welcome to TPI, the Total Podcast Idiot Show, where we cover everything and anything related to hardwood, the better college basketball universe than real life. I mean, I'll, I'll just say so myself. I'm idiot number one, Robert. That's idiot number two, Andrew over there. Andrew, how are you doing on this fine weekday, this fine Thursday? I'm doing all right. It's the first day of the real life in C2A tournament. And, you know, like we got the playing games. We're actually trying to watch them a little bit uh, right now. Um, some good action so far. I, heard, I think Drake won by like one. So that's that was a close game. We got uh, LL6 team in Michigan State against an LL1 team in UCLA uh, in, right, right in a few minutes here um yeah and then tomorrow i mean tomorrow tomorrow's the day right you know so we just we just get to we just get to like sit and not do anything and just watch basketball i my entire plan for tomorrow is to drink beer eat ritz crackers and watch basketball mm, i, I sounds literally like a good life <laughs> i literally don't think i'm gonna do anything else tomorrow um yeah hey, no but the the, yeah. the drake wichita state game was actually really good like you said um wichita state had a chance to win it at the buzzer but missed off of a, a three that clinked off the front rim. So that was pretty fun. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Dang. And yeah. Right now, as quick oh. score update, we have like Norfolk State playing Appalachian State, right? Yeah, which I looked up on Hardwood and both are LL6 spot teams. <laughs> are they really? Yeah, yeah. Damn. I thought somebody would have Appalachian State at least. I know. Yeah. I would. I thought so too. And Norfolk State, I feel like, isn't like a super unknown team. Like I've seen them in the NC to a tournament before, you know? Yeah. Norfolk state is somebody it, that like is familiar, you know? Yeah. I got some tradition there. Yeah. But yeah. But, so Norfolk state is beating Appalachian state right now, 41 to 25 in the second half. Appalachian state mm. is O for 20 from the three point line. Oh, wow. So uh, we've seen some performances like that in Hardwood though. <laughs> we have it, a particular team in our conference, maybe. Yeah, mm. <laughs> Maryland maybe. I'm just kidding. They made one. They're one for twenty two now. Oh, they're okay. one for twenty two. Hey. So now they're really looking like Maryland. Just giving you that slight glimmer of hope, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know what I just heard listening to this Michigan State UCLA preview. Um, I heard Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith have a podcast, and now I'm like, oh no, we're on that level. Charles Barkley, and if if. If we were those two, who would be Charles? That's my. That was my next question. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's my immediate thought. Is if it if if it was those two, then who the hell would be Charles? And who would Man, be Kenny? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They're no. both we, whack, honestly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. I was like, oh no, these two do a podcast, and we do what? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Smith doesn't even have LeBron in his top ten all time. And Chuck literally just has the most of oh takes gosh. about everything. So, like, yeah, I don't know. No, we're 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 not we're not quite like them. Can't can't equate us. But you know, maybe maybe we'll throw some some gems in there like they do. <laughs> we are the total podcast idiots, but they're like the next level in terms of idiots. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what are we going to talk about today? As they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to talk about sports and we do a free podcast. <laughs> um, hey, man. Yeah, so today is going to kind of be like a free form episode, right? We're going to talk a little bit. We're going to give like a tournament update. We're going to talk about, um, you know, some things that are going on in the hardwood universe, particularly with, with like the West Coast Conference scheduling that we've been doing. And then we're going to talk about recruiting and some like recruiting tactics and sort of you know, there's some different ideas that guys have shared in the discord and sort of how they built their teams. And of course, we've had, we've had Bridger on with Huntington University, he talked about how he takes his classes and stacks them and then builds after. So we're going to just kind of kind of visit all those things and sort of see what, you know, like, synthesize sort of all that information and see what comes out of it. And just talk about what might be, you know, like favorable options. I mean, I didn't, I didn't quite discuss this with you. I, I actually, I have some like, pretty deep ideas honestly with this and I don't know like how maybe some people have like I don't know they're probably like obvious to other people though of course yeah um but you know I think a lot of newer owners it's not as obvious especially based on like a lot of the advice that's given in the forums in the discord and you know it's good advice for beginners but there's definitely like 
next level strategies that I think uh, we can shed some light on basically. Yeah. Well, I think like, yeah, like we can shed some light on some things and it's better for people to hear from our mistakes or what we've learned than make their mistakes early on. Right. Like I would argue that's probably better off for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at some level too, though, everyone's got to make mistakes. I mean, it's, it's almost built into the game. Like I thought my, I, everything I've done is like so efficient, but like, it just, it just happens. You know, you lose out on a recruit that you spend a hundred contacts on. <laughs> mm. Maybe one of the you things know? that you can, you can educate the people on is when to give up on someone. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. Okay. Um, so let's, let's talk about the tournament first, right? I mean, we got the NC 2A tournament. Let's talk about the hardwood tournaments a little bit. This won't be quite as deep as what we do, you know, on the weekends. Um, but you know, we, we'll touch up on a, some things. Yeah. So let's so just stand up- out to you. Let's just update people. Let's just pull it up, go over some quickly, like the okay. number one seeds and stuff like that. Sure, sure. All right. So here's the D1 tournament. So, and so, you know, Louisville's still sitting on top here. So interesting, though, Louisville just got blown out. Yeah, I noticed they've, they've been losing a few games even. But lately. they got, they got like blown out, though. Like if you go to their schedule, they lost by like, I want to say it was like 30 or 40. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it was like 30 or 40. It was like quite the significant. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. 36 points to Utah State. Wow. Utah State. And then, I mean, they lost to the Grand Valley State by what, 26 points? Uh, yeah, yeah. 26 points here. Yeah. And so they've lost three out of the past four. I mean, not a great streak for, you know, a team that was, still is, I think, the number one team in RPI. Uh, you know, they're number three oh, ranked. Number now they're number two in RPI, yeah. Look at Louis or LSU still undefeated. Oh, yeah, I know, right. 29, 29 and 0. That's really impressive. Yeah, number three in RPI now. I kind of I kind of want them to finish the season 40 and 0, just for the sake of hey. podcasting content. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Up to number nine, up to a two seed now out of L uh yeah, LL4. That's that's mighty impressive. That's Definitely. representing for the lower leagues. Right, yeah. I mean, and then you got Mississippi, you know, typical. We we know that. That's the that same as last year, same uh, probably years before that. Just a good good team here. But then Lehigh and Iona, you know, we talked about Lehigh um, a little bit, I think. Uh, and, you know, they're playing really well. We talked about Lehigh when we did our Would You Rather kind of episode, didn't we? Right. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we both agreed that Lehigh was in a really good situation to make a run this year. Right. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, I think that's what we said. We said maybe long-term, I think they weren't our favorite out of the, that group though, but Hey, you know, this year they're playing well and taking advantage of what they got. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously we see like St. Mary's is currently sitting at a three seed. Personally, mm-hmm. I love that because St. Mary's was a team that was in the lower divisions with us when we joined. Yeah. And he's sort right, of been right. rising, so it's really fun to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We see Michigan um, Tech then, as a five seed. <laughs> I know. What the heck? 25 and four. Hey, we talk about low seeds and, and all that. Remember, they were, I believe, what, the second worst team rated team in the game uh, when, I, when I first took them over. Yeah, they were like, because we said we wanted to take some of the most terrible teams in the entire game. You took number two worst in Michigan Tech, and I took the number one worst in Kingsville. Yeah, well, I mean, I only did it by rating and not TPI. You did yeah, yours by TPI. I did mine. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. I <laughs> you, did my you had a harder TPI. task. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then and then can't forget about Iona here, though, as the other one seed. I mean, technically not the other one. They're the number two overall, and, you know, that's damn good. I know I've kind of almost gotten in some recruiting battles with them so i know they have a good team because you know they're on the same guys i am and i i think highly of my recruiting (laughs) abilities and you know no uh, but like they're having they're having a great year too so um where's the west coast representation though here you know i mean yeah if you look let's go through the list 
St. Yeah. Mary's is the first team from the West Coast, really. Right, yeah. And then Pacific, though. Yeah, right Pacific, here. yeah. Um, and then USC. Yeah, yeah, USC, UCLA. I mean, you know, it's not like it's not like it's there's definitely going to be teams from the West, but, you know, it's like we should be at the top. It's pretty representative of the actual NCAA tournament because, I mean, Arizona struggled this year. UCLA mm-hmm. struggled. They're in a playing game. USC is mm-hmm. like a six seed. Oregon's like a seven seed. Colorado's like a five seed. There's not like Gonzaga, obviously, is the number one overall seed and the favorite to win. Yeah. And Gonzaga's a West Coast team. But like historically, the West Coast has put out, you know, some strong Pac 12 squads and stuff. And the Pac 12 is pretty down this year. It's been down for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Really down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cal, particularly. Oh, man. Yeah. My, my, my guys, my alma mater, man. Um, but yeah. I mean, you know, what else, what else sticks out here? I mean, that's the number one seeds, obviously, you know, the, the, the in picture, the teams that are in, you know, littered with ranked teams. I wonder if Washburn out, wasn't Washburn the one that we were talking about on the weekend? Yeah. I mean, they're still on the bubble down there. They're still in the bubble. Oh yeah. Like they've moved up a lot. Yeah. I think they were like here. So I think technically they've moved down even. Yeah. I mean, and now there's a second ranked team on the bubble with Indiana Mm -hmm. state. Yeah. Yeah. So and they look strong. I mean, 24 and five is a good record. I mean, L03, but like L03 is good. I, I, I wouldn't discount that at all. There's quite a number of teams from LL3 that are in right now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So do you mind going to that conference? Let's take a look at the conference standings. Maybe they're like 24 and five, but all five are from conference or something. Fair. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's yeah. exactly right. There you go. So, I mean, we, we, we've harped on it multiple times that your conference standing, right, plays a mm-hmm. huge factor when it comes to tournament seeding and stuff. Here's an example of a team that's 24 and 5 and ranked. They have five conference losses. They're currently sitting outside the promotion picture, and they're being punished for it. Yeah, good eye. I mean, but Ohio's, I, I saw that they were number three in RPI. Obviously, they're 18 and 1 in conference. Um, so it's like they're led by a really strong team. So you would think even though Indiana state's fourth, that would push them up. Well, okay. So here's even more evidence to our statement, right? Mm -hmm. Oregon state is currently sitting at a 595 RPI. Indiana Mm -hmm. state is sitting at a 595 RPI, right? Right. Right. Um, in Oregon state has one game, better record, both in conference and overall, they're very, Mm -hmm. very similar in in terms of the two teams, right? The point differentials are pretty similar. Like Very all similar, things across yeah. the board, you would consider these two pretty equivalent teams, right? Strength and, of schedule even. Yeah. It's yeah. Like super duper close. And yet when you go to the tournament, Oregon State's mm-hmm. sitting comfortably in and Indiana mm-hmm. State's like, you know, on the outside looking in Oregon State's all the way. Yeah. Up. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge difference though. And it, I guess, yeah, it's just that conference standing, right? That's one game that separates those two in terms of their conference standing, but it's two mm-hmm. versus four which plays like, you know, obviously, I mean, this is a good case example of us arguing that that conference standing has a large factor in terms of your tournament seating. Well, so here's the thing though, here's the third place team Webster. They're all the way up here on the same line as Oregon state. Um, But I think they were tied with Indiana state by no. Okay. They're tied with Oregon state. Yeah. 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 They're a game up. Okay. Okay. I, I guess that's better, but still, I mean, it's not like Indiana state's out. Certainly, you know, they're right on the cusp. So like, it's, it's kind of nitpicking, but you know, I, I figured they could be like here on this line maybe or something. Well, so I don't even think it's nitpicking because if I'm Indiana state and I'm currently sitting in the position I'm in and I'm one game back of those teams and I have a very comparable art, like literally a tight RPI with Oregon state. I'm in terms of point differential right there with them. I'm wondering mm-hmm. why there's so much of a discrepancy. Right. And then you have to boil it down to the fact that and, you know, of course with tournament seating, it's representative of recent results. And so maybe Indiana state's on, you know, like a, lost two out of three or some kind of scenario sure. like that yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah like they're, I mean, they're six, six and four in their four. last ten yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so you know that's going to reflect a little bit of course but then i just think in terms of the overall significance of looking at the tournament picture we've painted a nice picture of the fact that you know your conference standing really matters for sure for sure wow look at us doing analysis well, and i you know i figured today was just going to be like a ragtag episode and we're actually bringing that fire bringing yeah. that heat yeah, I feel like I don't know. I don't know any good college basketball analysts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're all trash. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, we're a good hardwood analyst, so you know, that's uh that's what matters. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um we got a lot of you know, double digit loss teams. I mean, down in this second half of even the in picture, I guess not over here, but like 
right here. Oh, that's some of my conference mates. What the heck is North Dakota doing up here? What the heck? <laughs> I mean, I'm here, but I'm only... That's okay, what I was going to bring up it. is, yeah, <laughs> I was going to bring up like the significant teams that are sitting currently out. But yeah, yeah. I mean, we can, we can talk about that. I mean, you know, we've talked about Harvard being a very interesting team in, in LL4 with that super combo forward. They're um, interesting Joe because Dicks. I talked about them. Well, I mean, but you put, you have a good eye usually, you know, I, th- I think you have a good eye. Um, dude, I mean, I'm in the same conference as UNC here, Greensboro and Arizona and Greensboro is ner- notable to me because, I mean, I think to the whole hard, hardwood universe because they have like the second or highest TPI in D1 and theoretically the entire game or assume Greensboro? the entire game. Yeah, Greensboro. Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. I mean, remember, this is the team with like two 180s. Uh, I remember, yes, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I remember you mentioning them. Holy shit. Yeah. Top guy. Three. Top te- team. Presumably, so, you know, that's the top team in the whole game. Right. Yeah. So, like, the talent obviously eventually shows up, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to pick out the whole. Yeah. I mean, the entire. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> I got <this. laughs> Do this all I, there's no way there's somebody higher than them. yeah i mean you're right you wouldn't think so sorry all right there we go yeah top team in the entire game look at st louis i mean sorry i'm gonna go all the way down you see, you see there's proof 1008 bethune cookman there we go <laughs> oh my god 91 vcu 91. 93 vcu Ooh. vcu yeah and l05 too yeesh. yeesh yeesh but go back up to the top all right i go back to the top yeah i yeah. saw our buddy pittsburgh johntown down there st louis <laughs> ll5 where are they? Oh, 10. Oh, my gosh. Remember Dang. when we talked Top about 10. them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were undefeated for a while. By the way, I just cracked open a, like a, I don't know if you can see it, a grapefruit sculpin. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's the best invention ever made. Oh, yeah. That's like one of their best. Oh, it's beautiful, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it, too. Mm-hmm. All Sorry, right. To get back on point. <laughs> it's all good. Um, what other teams? I mean, Richard Love in Portland here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, remember, it's not just Richard Love here. I think they have a like a one mid one eighties like guard, Jordan Stamper. I think is Dude, still there. Their team's loaded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy. I mean, he you know he's better than Richard Love. I mean, right now, I probably not soon. Uh, he's oh my also God, graduated. Look at Elmer Kane. You know. Dude, oh my God, he's number three in the game. Oh now. my God, Whoa. as a junior, Whew. Whew. he's. Uh... He has a chance. I mean, as a 13 pot, you wonder if he can get as high as like Brent Roberts did for Simpson, right? Like 205. Right. But right, like right. he has a chance to get up there. You would think he could. I mean, because because you know, there's been a lot of talk in the Discord um recently, and I know before that guards, perimeter guys just get they have more room, uh, more stats, more categories to like build points in because it's more important yeah. to be good in those things. Um, so I guess in terms of just raw SI, yeah, he should, or he, he has a chance to get that high just because he's, he's a perimeter guy and Brent Roberts is a big guy to kind of. Yeah. And I think like in terms of when you look at successful players in their SI distribution, right. When it comes to a center, really, you're only worried about like, you know, four different categories, max, right. You're worried about rebounding, interior defense, like strength, and then like, maybe inside shot but even then a lot of guys recruit big guys that are going to be like you know primarily defensive stalwarts and rebounders and stuff but with guards it just litters the board right i I think at minimum i want four i mean i i think i think in terms of like what's the big man only things i mean outs inside outside shot rebounding interior defense but even the outside shot is like not that big of a deal i i really I prior, I mean, I kind of prioritize it for my entire team. So it just kind of follows that a big man. Okay. Will sure. But like, yeah, in terms, like you can just eliminate in terms of like, on un, not unnecessary, but like a little extra, like if you have to, like IQ, passing, ball handling, driving, you, they certainly don't need, you know? Okay. So let me say this, right? Let me say this. Let's think mm-hmm. about this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're looking for a big man, what are the things that put you off immediately to him or mm-hmm. don't 
versus what are the things that you're willing to punt on just to get somebody that's better in the other categories. I right? just and, clicked on Brent Roberts just for, so people have like the picture of like what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, And so my first thought is like, okay, well, I don't ever want to take a rebounder that has, or I don't ever want to take a player that has a negative rebounding comment, like a big, mm-hmm. I don't ever want to take a big that has a poor defender comment, right? But then like, if he has two, positive comments for those two categories and then the rest are like whatever like above average post moves or something i could care I like it's not a deal breaker for me yeah i mean so we got into this we it, it, this was talked about in the discord a tad yeah people were asking like what's what are like minimum numbers for certain categories and stuff and like i went on this diatribe <laughs> i feel like did you really yeah you yeah i, I was get like to see it Oh, I mean, it's like, it's from yesterday, so it's not old, you know, or you just like search my name or whatever. You go on, you often go on diatribes, so. No, I don't. What are you talking about? Not you, are, in, you are not, maybe not in that discord, but like in with me. Oh yeah, with you. Yeah, well, that's different. If if anybody didn't know, me and Andrew pretty much talk every day. I don't know why that's of an course. important fact, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, to answer your question about like what, what would turn me off though, uh, for a big man, I mean, lots of things turn me off. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so, so I agree. Like negative rebounding would be one thing, but I think if the taller a player is, the more lax I am to be with negative with rebounding, basically, because like it's just hard not to get rebounds when you're super tall, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you mentioned this multiple times when, especially when you're talking about looking for SI growth and sort of things like that. And it's a topic of conversation that we can literally touch on when we talk about recruiting strategies today and whatnot, but like size can mitigate a lot of negative factors. Yeah. So the one thing I don't think is really mitigated though. I mean, obviously if it's, if he's like a seven, one guy, who's like 300 pounds, they're going to be good. Not, not, Not good, no matter what, but like, they will be more effective in the post specifically, almost no matter what. Right. But the one the one thing that I think is not affected as much by just sheer size is interior defense. Now, a huge dude will still be like decent against not uh, against like decent guys in LL6 against against, you know, because six, seven, six, eight guys, you know, if they're seven one, they'll still be able to handle those shorter guys. Yeah. Um, even if they have a poor interior defense, but obviously the higher and higher you go, you're going to fight, uh, face more skilled big men. You're going to face bigger big men and they will be able to just shred you, um, right, shred right. that guy. Yeah. Um, so, so I think interior defense is probably the least affected by like sheer size. Um, so that's, that's like the one thing that I look for basically. Um, that, and that's, that's that, not the, not the one thing that's the main, the top thing I look for. And I think we've discussed this before, particularly when we were on our hike. Um, cause we go, the <laughs> you, hike. Guys think, you guys think we only talk about hardwood, like for the podcast and shit. No, we go on hikes. And we talk about hardwood. If COVID was over, we went to a bar. I'm sure we'd be talking about hardwood. Like we, we don't stop talking about hardwood, but we went I'm on emb- like, I'm embarrassed. I mean, like, you're right, cause, but I'm embarrassed now because it's like when I'm talking to not you, it will still be about hardwood. Yeah, like me and Andrew, what was it a year ago, like in June or something like that? We like were like, oh, let's just go shoot some hoops. We can distance each other and like just get outside. And yeah. all we did was talk about fucking hardwood for three hours. Sorry to drop Dude, an F bomb, so, but so good. You, so you do you mean the hike that where this was all born? I'm talking, I'm talking about the hike, the, the recent hike where we literally started getting really deep with questions. We're hiking up this, okay. like this incline. Right. And I'm like, if you put a center at point guard in college, is he going to have a slow SI growth because he has less opportunities to grow based on the categories or is it the other way around? And we, yeah, we literally yeah. like spent four hours on that hike. It was 12 miles or some ridiculous shit like that. Good. Talking about hardwood. Good stuff. Good talking stuff. about hardwood. Yeah. yeah. We're, but we are psycho. No, that was awesome, man. Um, anyway, so, sorry. No, no, it's good to talk about that origin story. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so interior defense is probably the like top thing I look for. But again, it, it, I think, I don't think there's like a minimum. I think it just all interplays with each other. Size, whatever ratings you're thinking of for that specific role or position, 
that you want this player to play. But the other important thing is, you know, strength. But strength can be counteracted by weight and even size to some point. Um, I mean, wingspan and vertical, I think, can affect interior defense because that's what we think of with like blocks and just OFG, uh, opponent's field goal percentage, right? Right, yeah. Um, height, height too, kind of. Um, what else? I mean, obviously rebounding is important. I want it to be good, but it's it's not always the first thing I'm looking for. So, so I feel like with, like you said, right, interior defense is not something that can be mitigated very easily with size alone. But with rebounding, it's, it's, I feel like that's more of a factor, right? Like if you have someone that's seven feet tall, 240 pounds, has some good strength on them, the rebound numbers will, will play into it, right? Like you're going to yeah. usually, you're going to be fine in that category versus defense, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll just pull up a dude who I used to have who <laughs> was never, could never be a good rebounder. And he's a six. And okay. Yeah. This is LL6, LL5. So I know all these LL you know, two, three teams that watch, you're going to be like, well, this guy would never play for me. And yeah, he shouldn't. He was not that great for me. But, but you love JT Yancey. Uh, I loved him in the beginning because he was like the only <laughs> dude who like would still be on my team when I actually like had my team, you know? Yeah. Um, But like, yeah, he wasn't good. He never averaged more than 10 points a game. I eventually started to bench him in his senior year when he was theoretically his best. <laughs> <laughs> um but you know he he started he averaged six rebounds a game for his career you know set as high as seven for a whole season like again not that good but it's not terrible for a six in rebounding like i don't think that's that bad but yeah. you know why because he was six nine and a half in in ll6 and ll5 right so okay so pull up modest luck is real quick because i sure. feel like he's a he's a very good um like counter example to this what's the more rare thing you think Lutkus or matas <laughs> <laughs> probably matas okay so Lutkus, right is six six and a half 215 pounds he has a 610 wingspan 34 inch vertical so he's like ideally probably you know like in the perfect scenario he's sort of like a twitchy small forward right like a big small right. forward right right Right. But I sort of convert him to power forward because he has a 13 rating and rebounding and a 14 rating in interior defense. Right. Also, because you needed him to. <laughs> I needed him. Yeah, exactly. But so so 14 rating in interior defense is pretty good. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, and yet look definitely. at his opponent field goal percentage numbers. Right. Yeah. 53.1. Yeah. He has always struggled no matter what. Now, you know, he's got a seven rating in strength. Right. And mm -hmm. that's a pretty big deal when we talk about big men. Right. But he's undersized. He's six, six and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like, I, you know, I think this is just a really good example of someone who, you know, is undersized, right, but has the skills, but then it just, it's a good example of the fact that your defense won't necessarily measure up, but he still averages eight rebounds a game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it would yeah. probably be more, but he's good to, he's next to like a really good rebounder in, in my like center, Roger Dean or whatever. Right, right. So like rebounding can be made up for that, even though he's undersized, but like the interior defense cannot. Right. Actually, I want to go back to Yancey um, and, and bring up his defense, because honestly, that OFG, not as good as I would have expected out of a guy who was 17. Yeah. Who rated 17. I would have thought, you know, better. I mean, maybe I just don't have the concept context um, necessary. Like maybe this is outstanding and that's great. But I, I think it's probably hurt by a lot of things on his profile. He's only 215 pounds. Um, you know, a lot of the times he was going up against 230 plus, you know, sometimes 250 and he just right. gets pushed around. And then his strength, you know, it's not the worst, but it wasn't that great either. 10 is, it's literally average. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, and then, and then on top of that, Fury's talked about a, a lot about this IQ. His IQ is only six. And I think that plays a role um, in, in, in everything really. So, I mean, it's hard to say exactly what, you know, he didn't foul right. a lot. Yeah. Um, partially because I took him out. <laughs> but, um, but you know, I, I think I think all three of those things, weight, strength, and IQ contributed to me like a kind of less than uh expected, worse than expected opponent's field goal percentage or, or defense, you know. Okay, so I have another example we should pull up, right? Okay. And it's yeah, yeah, with yeah. it's for my alma mater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, UC Irvine. Okay. 
because mm-hmm. like I noticed that they're a one seed on the tourney line for D3. And I was mm-hmm. like, interesting. Like, let me check out the roster. So I look at the roster mm-hmm. and there's this guy, Kenneth Lane, okay. who is like not very good. He's like a one star, right? He's like a 10 pot one star. Yeah, yeah. But this is an example of someone having all of the categories you would want for a big man. Mm-hmm. Right. Plus the requisite size. He's six ten and a half, yeah. two thirty five. He's got the seven one wingspan. Right. He's only a seventeen in interior rebounding. defense. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. But he's a seventeen, 17 interior in interior defense. Seventeen in strength. He's got twelve in inside, fourteen in outside shot. Right. And so, like, you look at his defensive numbers. You look at his, look at his rebounding numbers. Like last year, he averaged more rebounds or whatever. But like mm-hmm. his defensive numbers are pretty okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like you know this is an example of someone who wasn't like a super sought after recruit he's a one star right like a 10 pot but you know because he has a requisite size and the si distribution in certain spots it works out that's interesting yeah i mean i think that it's a big reason why uc irvine is on that top line in d3 you know i'm really surprised because like you know you could argue they've been underachievers for the past few years mm-hmm. and all of a sudden now they're like you know the number three overall seed or something yeah yeah having a good year so far so yeah far. so um yeah so i mean but like that's an, just an example real quick of of yeah. like you know take big men who you think can project to be starters or depth players or something and then you know what i mean like like you you need to really try and dig deep on big men like that's an example of one star yeah so let's let's get into like how to like kind of do that Oh, you can see who I was typing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, like we talk about, I, I guess we could go to Lane too. Big nasty. So, so this is what your, your, your boy, your all-time leading scorer at Oswego. And all-time leading rebounder. And all-time leading. Wow. I mean, yeah. honestly, honestly, like not super great in like rebounding and interior defense. So maybe <laughs> I, I think this will be a good example still, but like, you know, great offensively, not great, like solid offensively, great strength obviously he's seven feet. So the height's there, but just 215 pounds. Like, so I would think without looking at his numbers, even though I know his numbers and I kind of just glanced like defensively, he's not going to be that great. I mean, we see the nine here, we see the low weight, Yeah. but like rebounding, he should be really good just because of the height and the strength. Um, and then, you know, 12 is okay. Um, and then offensively, he's going to be really, really good. Right. And I think that describes him pretty much to a T pretty much perfectly yeah and i mean part of that accuracy is because i know him (laughs) but so you know we talk about how to how to find big men like this how do you know what they're gonna be in college right because obviously it's about finding them when they're recruits finding them when they're prospects yeah and so like I'm not going to lie. Sometimes you get honest, right? Like I took Dalton Wallace as an 88 SI senior because number one, he had no competition. So he's going to be a cheap recruit. I think I got him in like nine contacts or something. Like he got to like low plus and then scholarship offer and committed. So like, you know, that's great. So Mm -hmm. he was like a, you know, a a no competition recruit. And then he had the size and I was like, okay, great. He'll be a depth piece. And then all of a sudden he goes 88 to 106 in his, his freshman year. I redshirted him. He goes to 120. You know, yeah. and then he starts performing above his SI. Yeah. I mean, I, when Rob signed him, you know, he was a six eleven and a half, two hundred five guy. Um, you know, I, I forget what SI he was exactly. I think he was like mid eighties. Maybe he was when 80, he... 84 when I got him. Wow. You remember that? Yeah, I do. Because okay. I was like, so he was one of my very first recruits for Oswego. Right. 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 Actually, I think he was my first recruit with Oswego. Yeah. He was he's my first. Your... I think he's your first because he's like the only one in that class, right? Andrew, you never forget your first. Oh, I know, I know, I don't, <laughs> I definitely don't. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was, he was the, the only one in that class for, for yeah, Ju- Julian Rojas with, with Rochelle, <laughs> Charlie Raul with uh, uh, Dominican. Mine was yeah, Rob Vernon with Santa Clara. Yeah, we, we remember that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was so jealous. I was like, how did you get me? Because that was like five like, days five into our, our like life is as hardwood president i was i was so jealous though because i was like i told you all this info like and then and then you get the guy get a guy before me and i was like what? <laughs> no it was good oh was good. this turned out all right so you know in don wants has shown good growth so in in college so you know we talked about this before and so you just look at like the pure si growth and like for an 11 pot you know so we're looking for like 11s every year pretty much 
And so he had 15 this first year, then 11, but then a nine. So we're not like super enthused by him, but you know, this was like kind of an emergency option for us. We go. So it was hundred percent an emergency option. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets a 10 in that senior year, uh, you know, okay. But again, how do you know that he's going to be a 12 in rebounding? Cause I, you know, I don't know. Basically I want to take us to the devel- development draft though. Yeah. Well, but he doesn't have any comments like on rebounding or defense, right? He literally right. just has above average post moves, could be an excellent shooter, can be a smart player. We'll right. So I mean, we'll be a below average ball handler. Who gives a so shit what... about ball handling? <laughs> right. Um, you know, when they have these positive comments or even when they have these negative comments, you kind of know um, what they will be in, in those things. But, you know, there's a lot of overlap. They can, all, they can definitely like overextend a lot. Or, or you know shoot past the theoretical ranges of those of those comments but like how do you know um right yeah. I, I mean you will never know for sure but like how can you make an educated guess um so basically like you know you can find these the year that wallace was whenever you want to try to project from um you know so 2013 is that senior year i know that just because that's the year we joined <laughs> The season we joined um so you know he was a, a nine in os in 2013 right and he's a 14 now right so he had that he had that uh excellent shooter honestly i kind of think he should be a little higher with yeah. excellent yeah but um it kind of depends on what your team focuses on in terms of development we think i don't know maybe not <laughs> yeah no we think that like the minutes and the style you play your player is going to is going to you know, influence the development and whatnot. Right. So mm-hmm. in this case, he could be an excellent shooter, but I don't want that mofo anywhere near the three point line or outside of the key. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You want this guy in the key. So yeah, yeah. you're really looking at these above average post moves, yeah. but um, let's just focus on the outside shooting here just because it's easy to see <laughs> <laughs> versus like inside shot is not easy to see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're following that red line. So he was a six at the beginning of his high school career. Right. And I said he was a nine here, right? In his senior year. So in my head, I've kind of said, okay, he hopefully should double that growth. So by the time they're like a red shirt sophomore, I think. So three years in, um, basically three years into college, he should have doubled that, that growth. So, so he, what you're saying is he, if he grew three from freshman year to senior year in high school, mm-hmm. then he should grow six from his first year in the program to his redshirt sophomore year. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, he, he almost has, right. He was a nine coming in yeah. and in that redshirt sophomore. So here's redshirt year, here's freshman year and then freshman. here's redshirt for, uh, sophomore. So, I mean, okay. He wasn't great. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he kind of ended up there. Um, yeah. But again, it's, it's kind of dependent on what you focus on too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, we can go to like rebounding cause that's kind of what, we're interested here with him because he's a strong rebounder despite no comment. Eh, not strong. He's a good rebounder despite no comment though. Yeah. Um, so he started at a one though. That's crazy for a guy who was this big. Yeah. Um, and then in, in his senior year, he was a five and then a six in the second half. So let's see. Um, basically, what that, what's that math? Five? That's a difference of five, basically four or five. Yeah. Okay. So we would expect him to grow nine to 10, right? Eight to 10 from, from this point to about this point. Dang. What happened to Wallace? He's not that good, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I t- he's, he's all heart. True. Yeah. He's all, he's, he's your Kenneth Freed. Every team needs a Kenneth Freed. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm wrong in saying double. Maybe that's overshooting a bit. Or maybe um, Dalton Wallace is just a bad example of your. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me think about this actually real quick. This is beautiful podcasting content. It is. Of course it is. They can it see is. me thinking. They want to see into your mind. Maybe the better example is Kerry Schultz. Okay. We can go to him. Okay. Good. But what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that the more growth they show throughout high school, in specific categories is the same, not the game log, damn it, is the same growth they will show in those categories in college. Not not same, but like they will show good growth. It's comparable, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, so 
Schultz, right? So he has monster on the boards. He's a 14 rebounder now. What did he, at, what was he here? Three starting call, uh, high school. And then what was his commit year? Um, uh, 2015, right? Okay. Okay. So he was an eight uh, and then rose to a nine during the year. So like five to six. So we're expecting like, I would say another six. Okay. I think it's, it's crazy to expect 12. Actually, that sounds crazy to me. <laughs> uh, so I guess we should expect another six then. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be like a 15 then he's close. He's at 14. I mean, if we said, you know, uh, six from this point, from the beginning of his senior year, then yeah, he's right on. He's right. He's messed at. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess maybe, Let's see, how should I put this? From freshman to high school, take that, from freshman to senior year growth, take that and put that in for the next three years from freshman year of college to sophomore, retro sophomore, junior year, basically. Yeah, and so like we talk about the fact that comments mean that there's cert, that there's caps at certain categories, right? Like mm -hmm. can be a monster on the boards means that, you know, he will presumably get as close to 20 in rebounding as anybody would right could be a very good post player means that he's probably going to cap out and not you know be close to 20 or something mm -hmm. can be a good all-around defensive player versus great all-around defensive player means that he's probably going to cap out around 15 versus like a great could cap out around you know max 20 but mm -hmm. usually like 18 or something like that yeah right yeah and so that's going to influence things, right? Like, you know, if you have a comment can be a good all around defensive player and by your sophomore year, you've already reached what would be a good all around defensive player. You're probably not going to continue to grow much once you get into your junior and senior year. Right. 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 So like nothing in this game is ever a perfect equation is what I'm trying to say. Like your logic makes sense when you break down your high school to senior, your high school freshman to senior year growth and sort of applying it to your first three years in college and stuff. It makes sense, but like nothing is ever going to be an apples for apples straight up calculation kind of thing for sure i mean there's a lot of factors that play into it you know that you know are not in our control during the high school um times for these i said children children <laughs> <laughs> for these computer generated prospects who are <laughs> teenagers um and then and then it's reverse like it's so much in our control once they hit college right playing time the coach's development rating um those are the things that I think of mostly. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there's also a randomness that just j comes in because, you know, we I've had plenty of players. You've had some some players, probably plenty of players that were not great growth in high school and then like have shown good growth in college. Oh, yeah. I mean, Dalton Wallace is a perfect example. Yeah, Dalton Wallace. Yeah, perfect example there. We were yeah. just looking at him. Yeah, we were. Um, he had he had single digit growth in three out of his four years in high school. Right. Yeah. Which is yeah. usually going to be a really bad predictor, or I mean, it's going to be a good predictor of the fact that he's going to have bad college growth. No, he didn't but have he, single, single digit. He had, he had 11, 10 and nine though. I thought he had one season where it was good. And then two, a couple seasons where it was bad. It was, it was 15, 11, nine, 10. Why do you remember that? Cause we just did it. You're a freak. No, we just did it. No, you're a freak. Did you calculate no, just... it when we looked at it? Yes. He, no, he had 15. I said that. Dalton Wallace. I said that. 11 and then nine. I said that. I can said you, that. can you just, you're a freak. I had my taquitos. <laughs> All right. Um, but it's important because like from freshman. You're just a psychopath. <laughs> well, yeah. High school freshman year to high school senior year. That's less time though than fresh college freshman to redshirt sophomore basically. So that's why it's important to like, um, that's why that growth is better in college because it's in a fast, a shorter time period. If I'm your basically. best man at your wedding, I'm going to mention hardwood. <laughs> oh, there's an easy, <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on you to make me your best man at your wedding. I'm not, but I'm just saying, should that opportunity ever arise, I will make some sort of, some sort of reference to hardwood. You can give a speech anyways. <laughs> I mean, you know, I might, I like the best man might finish and everybody's like cheering. And then I just walk up, ding, 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 you know, just walk up and like, uh, you know, we'll see. Here if we now, ever... 
we'll see if we ever get to that point <laughs> and, yeah right right um so let's see so yeah so high school growth analyze that and it, you know we talked about the overall SI, but like you can look at individual categories and that will help you project and project what they will be in those important categories and i know this is tedious and i do not do it for everybody but i do it when i'm bored <laughs> or just when i when i'm like i'm going to invest a lot and so in order to invest a lot i need to investigate a lot yeah we so i was thinking about this the other day so right so like um basoy had posted in the discord that he's testing like a browser extension that could show you based on like your coach's development rating and stuff like that, like a player's potential category cap. Mm -hmm. And he actually posted a picture of it and like showed ranges for the caps and stuff. And I was like, hmm, Basoy, like you need to share that with everyone. That's yeah. quite interesting. Um, Cause that might give him some sort of leg up on recruiting. I mean, if honestly, if you can, if you build something like that, like I wouldn't share it. Exactly. You no, know, I wouldn't share it either. But like, my point is that like we do this in our head, right? We we read yeah. comments and we try and make that like category range in our head. And so it's like, let me just go ahead and make this as a browser extension. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, everybody get on Basoy and force them to share that. <laughs> so I mean, I kind of learned this from the Broken Bat, the baseball game. I mean, the comments are kind of important. I mean, they are important, especially for a quick overview. But again, those are like to provide ranges of ceilings. And they can go above that and they certainly can fall short. But like, I, I often look at the growth more and then I'll, I'll check to see if like that end number kind of makes sense with the comments. If it doesn't, then I'll probably reduce it, bring it back down a little bit. Yeah. Um, or if it, you know, if it, or I could bring it up technically, like with Wallace, since he's an excellent shooter, but he's only a 14. If I was recruiting him back in high school, I would have maybe projected he could be a, a 16 or something, even though his, and rating might have only taken me to 14 or something, you know? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. Um, again, it's not a perfect science or, or the equation. It's not a perfect science. Yeah. But, but it gives you ballpark, I think. And that is enough a lot of the time. And so, like, I feel like this is not really going to apply to a lot of LL1 teams or maybe even LL2 because those are guys that are going to go after the really obvious prospects that are going to hit, right? Your five and four stars or your guys that, like, have all the really good positive comments and size. But if you're, like, joining the game and you're LL4, LL5, LL6, then you sort of need to find intricacies that you can exploit, right? You need to find the little areas that you can exploit and find guys that you can put on your roster that are going to help you get up to LL3 kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of think most of the presidents in LL2, LL1 probably already know this. Yeah, so they, for sure. They do. And then that's why it's not as useful for them. Um, not only do they know it, but they don't need to utilize it as much. <laughs> I, I think I think they still can. I mean, you can there's there's even in the fours and five stars, there are bad apples, you know, that to sort to sort through. And so, you know, it's like this you know, and, and plenty of other easier ways um, can help with that, though, I think. Yeah, for, sure, for um, sure. Or or find, you know, really good apples. And I mean, everyone in this game also wants to be more efficient and, you know, find the values. And so that will help with this, you know, even LL1 teams are not always hunting fours and fives, you know, they got to look at the yeah. three stars. Too. You have to fill out your roster with guys that make sense for sure. Yeah. Um, everybody wants to be efficient unless you're Divac. You just want to recruit internationals. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one got me. That one that was very good. That was very good. Divac uh, is not efficient. He sticks to his script no matter what. Hey, we re I respect it. I respect Hey, it, I respect the hell out of it. I'm not I'm not picking on Divac. I just like it must be hard. Remember, we we're supposed to talk about the tournament. <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. D1. So Wait, go back, go, go back to D1. Okay, I thought we were done with you one because no, because we got to mention the two teams that are currently sitting out that like are interesting to us because what I don't see any teams that are your team, College Dude, of New Rochelle. My team is garbage. Go to your conference. Go to your conference. Okay, first off, your conference is insane. Well, we we did with Greensboro. That's Green, Greensboro. Remember that team that's top of the CPI yeah, yeah. rankings, but they're fourth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we did one go to that. Differential yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, North. You know, I talked about North Dakota, kind of. You were six yesterday. I was. It's. I mean, it is a crazy conference, right? I mean, ten teams have winning records in conference. <laughs> the tenth place team is three games back at first. <laughs> That's hilarious. oh my god. And Eckerd is good. They just beat me earlier. They have a, yeah, like a one sixty big man. Yeah, yeah. really good. They've they have a one sixty big man and like two perimeter guys, a point guard and the uh, shooting guard who are like one seventy plus. <laughs> wow. And they're in eleven. <laughs> It's so funny because if you look at like, okay, so one through seven are all, you know, in the mix for first, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you look at their last 10, you don't see any dominant, like you see a couple of eight and twos for sure, right? But you don't and see, you see any, this garbage right here. What the yeah, hell you don't garbage. see any nine and one or 10 and oh, like, yeah, what the hell? By the way, the garbage is me. My garbage is my kid. The garbage is Rochelle. <sighs> We're just in a down, downturn right now. You're not we'll garbage. You're in a promotion spot. We'll come up. Yeah, that's true. Hey, calm yourself right. by one point. I'm trying to downplay it. So then who does Rochelle play tomorrow? Uh, and who does Green's play? Just like, scroll yeah. down. Just scroll down. I don't want it. <laughs> Humble. I play Humboldt State in Greensboro. Plays oh, you're Tech. home. Oh, shit. Okay. You better win. It's all good. That's just, there's, I can't just worry about Greensboro. I have all these other teams to worry about. That's true. Dude. You can't worry about any single team. Yeah. Dude, literally like two days ago, Brandeis was in first. <laughs> My God, what a conference. That's <laughs> wild. Know. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna make any predictions about this conference. No, no, it's no. Crazy. Well, we're, no, gonna, no, no. we're gonna. All right. Um, the so other yeah. team I want to mention What's is is Cal State Florida, but that's because my buddy runs that team. Yeah. Well, and we have a we have a connection there too. You know. We do. Yes. And yeah, we. Well, if anybody doesn't know, we both did our master's programs there. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how I know this guy. Yeah. Exactly. That's how we met. We literally, uh, so I, I don't care if we're getting off topic. Everybody can hear this. I don't care. So we were, we took a class together. How do we, <laughs> we took a class together. We t- yeah, what was it? It was like a seminar class, right? That yeah. Was- it was like um, genomics of like conservation <laughs> biology or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy invites me to his fantasy baseball league, right? And the very first night that I get accepted, I'm on there posting like free agents and stuff. And he comments on the website, Rob, why are you in class looking at fantasy baseball? And I just look at him and I was like, why the hell do you think I'm looking at fantasy baseball? Oh, yep, gosh. Yep. Good times. Good times, dude. That was hilarious. We and were both on it. We were both, yeah, we were both literally looking at our fantasy baseball teams during class. And then, so me and this guy, Andrew, and then our other friend, Newton, um, we're kind of like a trio of friends at where we're at Cal State Florida in our master's program. And now Newton is my roommate as we're in our PhD programs. So it's like, it's, it's just, it's a really weird, like sort of. Yeah. 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 No, it's been great. It's been great. Yeah. Oh man. Anyways. But yeah, that's our connection to Cal State Florida. We both did our master's there. Our master's yeah. Program. So we got a, we got a special put, uh, place in our heart for them. And one of my best friends happens to be the president of Cal State Fullerton. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. So it's like, uh, it's a multitude of factors here. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's move on to D2. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I know the, the big news was St. Edward's losing. Yes. You know, now they're 20 and one, no more undefeated team uh, in D2, at least they're still LSU. That's it. That's the yep. only one. That's the only undefeated team left in the whole game. I think, right. There's no, I think so. there's none in, in D3. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, and we talked about St. Edwards was like a three seed, you know, over the weekend, and now they're a two seed, but they were a one seed like before they literally just lost. Yeah. So like they they were getting that respect other than like they were getting the respect in their rankings too. They were, you know, number 17 or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, they they were getting that respect with from the tournament committee, and then and then you know they lose and drop a little bit, but you know, they're still very, very good. Yeah, I mean, you know, what, being a one versus a two seed in terms of the tournament doesn't really matter that much. Mm-hmm. Like, it really doesn't. It's so chaotic that as long as you make it, you have a chance to win. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, but, like, obviously, St. Edwards was ranked when they were undefeated. They lose one game, and they're unranked, right? And then, like, you know, some of the LL1 teams that um, um, are, are ranked have, like, you know, six, seven losses or something like that. So it just goes to show, like, not the favoritism. I don't want to say that word, but like the bias towards the the higher the teams in the higher leagues versus yeah. you know a little bit down the line. And I get it, right? It's m- much levels higher and stuff, but like, just an example, yeah. 
And, you know, I got to shout out my own team here. I'm not going to be like all braggy. No, what I'm going to actually say is they need to pick their crap up because they're playing terribly. Yeah. I, don't, I only have like, uh, I have a 10 point win. I have a five point win. I have a two point win today. Oh my goodness. They need Over to teams not... that you should be like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're not bad teams. Claflin, uh, Jackson State, Columbus State, like they're all like mid table. True. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're but all winning like, records. But ever since ever since our game where I made a joke that like, oh, maybe some of my players get achy tummies or something. <laughs> now they're playing like they have achy tummies. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you get a little too cocky with your team and then, uh, you know. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It, and it, then they very much. Yeah. They start feeling the hype. Um, but yeah, no no, your, your team, your team's really good. The number one overall seed so far in the tournament. And no, I think I, I, you'll probably finish that way. That's not that's not how I'm that's not why I'm bringing them up. No, they they need to step it up. Okay, well, or else we're gonna have some problems. What what kind of problems? You're gonna not be the number one overall seed. I'm gonna bring the come ask ask them to come into my office and have some talks. The tiny little four by four office that the head <laughs> the president of the Dominican University of California Penguins has. Yeah, we make sacrifices for our players. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's summarize a few things about the D2 tournament real quick. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, a shout out some some teams um that I know listen. I mean, Carnegie Mellon's having a really good year over here, actually. I, I didn't really notice before. I mean, they're in that murder conference of uh 5.8, you know. Yeah. So, you know, that's gonna raise their strength of schedule, their RPI, but you gotta win and they're winning. Yeah, definitely. So. Um you know, good season for them. And we already mentioned that conference is really tough. The, 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 the thing that pops into my mind is San Diego, right. From the same conference, but yeah, having a really damn good season. The president is Frogman. He wants to go ahead and talk trash already before, no. our, before our game next season. Actually talk about that, the pod, the WCC pod, you guys are, you know, doing. let's, let's just talk about that. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm really ahead. excited about it. Like I, I want to see the smack talk. I want to see the results, just how this all plays out. Cause I think it's really cool. So I'm going to steal the share screen. Go ahead. You see it, right? You see that? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I have yeah. two monitors. I have to figure it out. Oh, um, yeah. so, so first of all, shout out to NAF, you know, St. Mary's. First of all, we know he's a dedicated listener. We know he's a dedicated Discord user, but he went ahead and was like the spearhead for all of this program. So I appreciate him. But our our idea, you know, and we've talked about this before, our idea was to set up a, you know, in terms of like the rivalries that we have, set up a West Coast Conference, um, you know, two pod situation mm -hmm. where all the real life West Coast Conference teams play each other and we can like have promotion and relegation, right? And so you see here, we have pod A and pod B, which NAF calculated by the average returning like um, TPI for the team next year so that we didn't take into account like teams that were going to lose a lot or gain a lot this year kind of thing. Um, and, you know, it's sort of like not round robin, but it's like kind of random who you play. So like if you're Gonzaga, you're going to play Loyola, Pacific and St. Mary's. Right. But basically what we're going to do is between pod A and pod B. In pod A, the two teams that finish on the bottom here, so out of your three games, if you finish like one and two or whatever, um, you're, you're going to go down to pod B. And the two teams that finish in the top of pod B are going to go up to pod A. And it's four mm -hmm. teams each pod. So like, that's a lot of movement, right? That's half of the yeah. pod. Yeah, that's a lot team. of movement. Mm -hmm. But we really wanted to mix up the amount of teams that we get to play and sort of, you know, not end up a situation where like pod B ends up being better than pod A because of you know movement of one team versus one team goes up kind of thing so like we set up this really cool situation where for our rival for for our rivalry weeks too many beers already um <laughs> you know we just set up this west coast conference pod and so week seven next year i have san diego here santa clara versus san diego mm -hmm. and frogman's already talking some shit this guy wants to <laughs> jump on and say you know um yeah just count that as an l now all right frogman okay <laughs> all right i see you toreros you think i'm scared yeah, i'm not yeah. scared i'm not scared i'm ready I'm, I'm ready for i'm ready for week seven for next year mm -hmm. I'm, re I'm ready i'm ready but i i think this is a really good example you know we had um eight total teams sign up for this right like eight actual west coast conference teams um it's a really good example of something that people should sort of should sort of probe in terms of like 
you know, setting this kind of thing up for their conference as well. So like if you're in the Pac-12, yeah. you hit up all the other Pac-12 teams, figure out if they want to be in this kind of thing, and then set up this two-pod conference. It's a really cool way to set up your rivalry weeks and make your non-con more exciting versus like I really don't give two shits about non-con as it currently is, right? But now I will because I want to beat San <laughs> right, Diego's right. ass. Because I want to yeah, beat Frogman's yeah. ass. I don't want to hear him talk shit anymore. So like... <laughs> It's going to make it really exciting for me, or it's going to mean I don't want to podcast that day because I don't know what day it'll fall on. But, um, right, right. but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool idea. And again, shout out to NAF for setting it all up because I just think it's, it's pretty badass. Theoretically, it should fall. It could fall on a Thursday, I think. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. You could, you could track it. It's, it's the same schedule every single time. If San Diego beats me, on a day of of our supposed podcast i will not podcast okay well, i'm putting we'll that out we'll into the world now because i will literally not want to do it just do it on my own then okay you can <laughs> go ahead you can invite a guest you can invite san diego on you can invite frogman <laughs> on for that day to talk his shit have his moment but i'll be hey. i will not be any part of it oh okay okay <laughs> we'll see i am staking my flag now <laughs> all right um let's that's i'm excited to to see the results of this you know i think it's going to be really interesting i I like to i like to see this map talk keep it going no it's really cool i like it and like i said i'm really excited for you know like next season we're gonna have a chance to like i'll be able to update the results of this as we go each week you know like so maybe by week seven you know um it's a thursday and we're recording a podcast i can summarize the, pe- the teams that are going up versus teams that are going down kind of thing mm-hmm, and so like mm-hmm. if somebody else wants to set this up let us know we'll track it and we'll give you a shout out on the podcast as well hey yeah yeah um so you know let's go back to d the d2 tourney let's though. do it yeah we have gotten so, so sidetracked I say, hey yeah seriously this uh you know we talked wisconsin green bay 28 and one two. Oh my gosh that's a solid record that's a three seed as a three seed though yeah that's that's pretty crazy um what other teams listen to us i don't know well clayton state State was a guest was he not no no but um it's not the same fury oh i'm yeah that's right i'm mistaking fury it's my bad my bad um but you know i know he does he does listen so i mean hey our number one seed i think all of these teams i don't know san diego's never reached out to us but i know kansas listens Clayton State, you know, both having good years. They're the same conference. Look at that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's two really good teams. <laughs> Come on, Slippery Rock. Where are you at? Join, join me up top here. <laughs> Too busy losing to me. Oh, God. Oh, play, let's I, go. Oh, yeah. I wanted to say I, that. I, I hope fl- you beat him tomorrow. I play <laughs> him tomorrow on the road and I'm not excited. No, nah, let's go. Let's go. You I'm got worried. it. You got it. I'm, I have faith. I have faith in you. Okay. Um, it's a good thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Wyoming. <laughs> Right, Shout one out of Wyoming. our most faithful Always. listeners who listens didn't, to every single. Didn't episode. they put out a, a little guarantee earlier? Uh, oh, I mean, he always puts out guarantees about how he's going to smash Washington State. Yeah, well, did they did they follow through, or did, is it not uh, happened yet? I forget. I so forget. I will quote. Oh, what he said oh, it's last tomorrow. Time. Oh, oh, it's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. He's coming off a one hundred two to forty six win. Let me quote Ooh, what he sheesh. said. He said. Uh, this is about our, he commented on our last vid, which mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he said another great pod. I don't know what you were listening to, whatever. <laughs> uh, hoping, <laughs> hoping we can stay on top and promote. We still have way more away games than home or way more away games played than home games. So hoping we can keep pulling off wins the rest of the way and increase our PD. We are 14 and three now, but technically we are 15 and three since there is no way my Cowboys will lose on Friday at the packed war Memorial field house to the frauds at Washington state. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I feed off of this level of shit talk. The, yeah, the, yeah, hate, yeah. the hate that Wyoming has for Washington State is an example of the, what the rest of you should be posting as comments on our videos. <laughs> because we will directly mention you when we do our podcast. Because we eat that shit up. Heck yeah. PRs too. I want to read that in PRs. Man. Oh God. It's just so beautiful. Like hey, stinky man. cheese. Yeah. Stinky cheese of Washington State. If you're tired of hearing Wyoming talk shit, like comment on the vids and talk yeah. some back. Yeah, let's get some let's get some uh back and forth there. Yeah. Yeah. Although you're currently sitting in demotion spot, so maybe Ooh. you just want to like worry Eesh. about that. Eesh. Yeah. Um, let's see. I want to shout out one of a new a new listener, Thomas Moore College president. 
Oh yeah, I've um, seen them active in the Discord the last two days. Wait, what happened? Oh, what? Wait, what? Is this not the right college? It's not oh, the right college. It's not Thomas. Oops. Okay. Well, now I feel weird. Thomas College. What the heck? There's Thomas More and Thomas College. Is there a Thomas That's Less? Too conf- That's too confusing. Okay. Well, we'll get to them in, in D three then. I guess. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so not shout out you, bat. <laughs> um, Sanford, though, I mean, they have a president who's been really active uh, lately. Yeah, um, he's pretty so, new, right? Yeah, he's pretty new. Um, base scout, right? They joined in a couple months ago. Wow. Dang, time moves so quickly. <laughs> yeah, seriously, holy shit. Um, so, I mean, good luck. That This is your conference. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. He asked... He asked today, I don't know if you saw this. He asked, what is, what is Sanford's chances of promoting specifically over, over this team? <laughs> Did he really ask that? While I was in my final exam, he asked that? Uh, I think it was in the morning. In the morning. So not while you're in your final exam. Right. but Do I have to have like uh, some an work? enemy now? Some, some work? I mean, Do I have to have he, an enemy? He, he was saying because he beat you twice. Huh? Mm, Did he beat me twice? I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, he got you here. And he got you here. That's fine. I don't care. I'm still above him. <laughs> Not my problem. But everyone was saying, uh, it's going to be tough because uh, look at this point differential on top of the two games. Yeah. No, bruh. You're not. No. Just stop. Okay. <laughs> just stop. Look at the point differential I have over Stephen F. Austin and Stanford. Or yeah, Stanford. Yeah. Just, just stop. I mean, hey, I appreciate your enthusiasm for the game, but it's like, it ain't it ain't half the cap. Like like I told you, you and our buddy, uh, I I wish I had the confidence Sanford's president has in his own team on like a lot of things. Yeah, seriously, right? Because uh, it's is wild a little bit. <laughs> but shout out, okay, shout out the, hey. the fact that you beat me twice. That's fair. I'm yeah. I'm gonna give you your props when they're due. And in the tournament picture, like that's that's not uh not too shabby for sure. Like I said, I'm going to give you props when it's due. Now, you took over this team this year, so you didn't really build it. So... <laughs> or no, last year. You took over last year. So, uh, I don't know. But shout out. You beat me twice. That's fair. Um, Washington I'm still, University. I'm, you I'm know, still going to promote when you're not them. going to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, not my uh, I want to shout out Washington University. Same conference. Leading that conference. Dude. Um, yes. They're good. They're, we talked about that, that game against Oswego last time. And, if they're tough to stop, they're a tough team. Caleb Henry. And I, the only reason I know his first name is because he joined the the um, tournament challenge thing that on ESPN for the NCAA tournament. And he put mm-hmm. his name Caleb Henry. But, yes, shout out to Caleb Henry because um, they're a really damn good team. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they're on, like, what, a 20-game win streak right now. Are they really? They're on a 20-game win streak right Holy now. Holy moly. That's yeah. two 10 and 0 streak. <laughs> That's two 10 and 0s, yeah. Um, so every year since uh, we they 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 won their last non-con game and they're 19 and 0 in conference. So that's crazy. Damn good. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know who else listens to us to be honest here. I mean, so let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Coco. If you moments, listen to us and you're in D2, comment and say you listen to us so that we can know who you are. Harden Simmons, I gotta shout them out too. Oh, yeah. yeah I, Simmons, I know they yeah. do. I know from, they do. From Texas, yeah. 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 North yeah. Carolina A&T. No, I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I don't I haven't heard from them. Yeah. <laughs> CX Hawk 93. I don't think they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um all right. Yeah. Let's let's move on. LeBron James. I don't want to skip anyone though, in case <laughs> in case they do. I feel bad then, you know? Well, let's just <laughs> take a quick peek. Well, Wait, San Diego, you see San Diego, right? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. That's um Alex J, or otherwise known as um <laughs> J- Jedi Alex. <laughs> Jedi Alex. <laughs> Jedi well, Alex. I'm surprised they're in the the picture. I know. At 15, I'm 14. a little surprised they're in the tournament picture, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, at 15, 14. I mean, good conference record, good conference ranking, but like, wow, 147. Oh, Jesus, that's their TBI home moment. That was a good team. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> um i mean it's deep right they were 140 is like their eighth best player and this is their starting center didn't you want robbie fontana or no uh i I had my eye on him for a little bit yeah okay i thought so i i like i like the guy i got you know my my guy my guy's taller but this guy is a better rebounder but my guy's a better defender 
he's better just like S- total SI wise though. But talk about I, I like my guy. Talk about like red shirt strategy. My God. Hey, not Robbie Fontana though. Not Robbie Fontana. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, I mean, I've had my eye on like Clay McGee before. Tim Cornette, I had my eye on. He's played really well. He's I know he's the starting center here. Um, dude, Dion Ware, dude, doesn't get playing time. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Dude, 18 minutes. 18. Yeah. That ain't enough. Not probably playing Dion. backup power forward and backup center, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but, but shout yeah, out to Jedi Alex. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah, you got a good team. I mean, they look strong. But you Just need to win more games. Need to win more games. And then you'll you won't be out. You'll be in. in. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness gracious. Oh goodness. We're feeling good right now, aren't we? Oh, we are. Maybe I should drink beer every time we podcast. <laughs> I'll join you. I'll join you at some point. So real quick, I just wanted to give an update mm-hmm. um, on the Norfolk and Appalachian State game. So we were talking Ooh. shit on Appalachian State for being terrible. And the final score of the game was Norfolk State 54, Appalachian State 53. Oh, close. So game. they actually, Almost. Appalachian State came back and took a four point lead with six minutes left to go in the game. Wow. And then it was like very back and forth to the last second. Okay. Norfolk How, State made Norfolk State made two free throws with 10 seconds left to win the game. Ooh, wow. That's a hardwood. I've seen that plenty of times at hardwood. Mm-hmm. All right. How's that at Michigan State UCLA game? Michigan State's up on UCLA at halftime, 44 to 33. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which Michigan State doesn't score 44 and a half against anyone. So it just shows you how bad <laughs> defensively UCLA is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move on to D3. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Now like I an can... hour and a half in. I know. It's it's a while. It's okay. Um, <laughs> we never shut up. We don't. We don't. Okay. Now I can shout out what Thomas College. <laughs> yes. New, Thomas, New, college. Thomas College. Here they are. Here they are. You're in. You're in. Congratulations. Well, I mean, hey, you got to finish the job though. Right. You're don't they have wait so now but uh thomas college has a ha, thomas college has a thomas college college what whatever <laughs> has a player that's an si of 173 get out really canadian fireballs was the president what a name 173 yeah we can read that in pr in a bit yeah and he's not Stokes, even he's not even a, a red shirt either yeah i don't don't you remember facing this guy uh i know, do like kingsville yeah yeah i, I remember him because I remember he's like the point guard when he like, I thought he'd be the small forward. So yeah. he was, he was getting small forward minutes, like right before I played him. And then I saw he switched to point guard. I was like, wait, what the heck? And I was like, okay, that's fine. Cause I have Justin Fujishima, who's like a 17 perimeter defender, but he's way smaller than this guy. Yeah. And this guy, like this guy went off. I remember. Dude, on me. this is a roster to make Divock jealous. <laughs> oh really oh hold on I, I will literally pull up the game that this guy torched michigan tech because i remember it <laughs> this one oh an overtime 28 points oh 20 and 10 that man dropped a double double yep yeah but go back go back and look at this game against kingsville you know he was Which no one? match for this one you know he was no match for oh i know ben Latham. He's not, no point guard Matthew McGrath. Oh, Matthew McGrath. He was what no match. He, he scored 27 points. Sure, but McGrath had nine points and nine assists, sir. I mean, <laughs> hey, he was a plus <laughs> he's a plus 14. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways. All right. Um, well, let's go back to that roster, the international roster. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. My God. To, to make Devok jealous, like I said. Look at look at these well, guys. I don't know about that because none of these are Czech players it doesn't matter if they're international d box all of them <laughs> yeah but specifically check actually this guy's a czech guy yeah Vít svoboda 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 yeah um <laughs> i think i think this guy's like made d uh like all czech national team <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness hey he's a junior you better step it up because he's like a 102 or something 106 He's a 106 SI as a junior, and he made the Czech all-national team? They ain't that deep. They ain't that deep. <laughs> the Czechs are in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, who we got here? Uh, I mean, Kentucky Wesleyan, Covenant, UC Irvine we talked about, Arkansas Tech up here. At, in the the Wonder line, Boys. The top yes. line. The Wonder, the Wonder Boys. Boys. Yeah, great name. Great name. Fantastic. 
former undefeated team hood i mean technically i guess every team was unde- formerly undefeated because we all start at zero zero <laughs> uh buena vista we talked about they're all the way down at three. Oh no buena vista is a team that you highlighted early on did we right? curse did i curse them i mean they're a three c they're 23 and six it's true oh my gosh look where elmer kane is ah oh, yeah they're 27 and two but they must have like a pretty weak rbi because of sos yeah yeah that's true oh I mean, look where look where hassan is where's hassan not i don't two see lines them. down oh no they oh dropped. no they dropped dropping like a rock drop it like it's hot yeah i mean hassan ain't hot though yeah no <laughs> um we, I know Massachusetts Maritime, they're having a good year. Uh, you know, staying steady here. You know, you know t- tough to argue, tough to argue. I don't know if like there's much room to move up, though. That's the problem. Oh, well, they got Arkansas Tech in their conference. Yeah, oh, there's only two teams, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's, there's plenty of room to move up, but it's hard to catch them, basically. Yeah, and we literally just talked about the fact that conference standing is such an important factor for a tournament seating. So mm-hmm. yeah, not a lot of opportunity for them to move up based on that alone. I mean, I, I don't know the actual like conference difference. I mean, they're only one game back, but like still that's not going to put Massachusetts on the one line, you know? Yeah. I mean, they'd have to be uh, like, look at their schedule real quick. Let's see when they play Arkansas Tech. Sure. They might have yeah, already, yeah. they might have already like played them Arkansas. twice or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, looks like they did. Yeah. Yeah. They so already they, they won here. Oh, nice. Okay. And they won. Oh, yeah. So they were like first first slot. Okay. Yeah. So like their their opportunity to gain a game on Arkansas Tech from head to head competition is gone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but they could obviously tie them or jump them and and gain some spots here. But again, yeah. In D three, as our challenge challenge showed, is that D three is chaos. You just, just got to make the in. tournament, and then just you never in. know. Just get yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, let's bring that up. Can you can you bring the challenge side up? I sure can. Yeah, let me bring up so, the I don't challenge. Know, I mean, I know we have a few new listeners. I don't know how many, probably more than a few. But you know, last year we did this bracket, like challenge, just like picking your NC2A bracket, you know, in March Madness. But we did it with hardwood and we did it with each division. You know, we yes. had a number of people do all three. We had some people just do one, and that's that's great. Um but you know, we we set it up, and you just make pick the picks. You make the picks. Um, so if yeah. if if you're a new listener or a constant listener, and you didn't participate last time, right? Maybe you didn't have an understanding of how everything was going to fall. But so here's how it's going to fall, right? So like, it's usually a Friday. It's going to be Friday again this year, right? Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be a Friday it's, again. It's it's it. What April? April. I want to say second. I think right. Or or no 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 no, no that no, no, seems no, no, so no. It's, soon it's, no it's the it's the week before no yeah yeah it's April second it's April second April second okay April 2nd. so April second is the day after the conference finals right and the day that the tournament is going to generate right and so I we knew the day of the conference final I mean you know or, yeah, 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 yeah well but yeah so like the conference finals will finish by like let's just say nine thirty a.m. Western time right and then it's, the tournament when the tournament will. Generate. yes yeah. <laughs> yes so april 2nd is when the tournament is going to generate which is when we're going to have to line up all the teams on here right and you only have one day because of how fast the tournament time uh the turn the tournament turnaround time is before the the you know first round of games is on saturday you'll have one yeah. day to fill in your bracket but it's really easy you go to challenge right well we're going to post all the different links for d1 d2 d3 you click in all your your bracket cho- choices and stuff like that and then you can make predictions right and yeah. so like for example last year D- d3 was really hard to predict you can see nobody had like elite eight or final four or national championship winners but we had some really good stuff with um with uh, uh like d1 in particular d1, d1 is solid yeah so we had 23 people participate last year in d1 which was really exciting right and sure i ended up winning but that's not the point here um mm-hmm. the point is that we had a lot of people participate and there was some really good competition and like, if you just want to take a peek at what a bracket looks like, right, it's literally like what you would expect from, you know, it's not as beautiful in the interface as ESPN or anything, but it's the same sort of thing. We do all the matchups, you select the teams, and then you can sort of pick your teams to go through the whole way. Yeah. So, you know, just, just, um, you know, create an account. It's kind of like a wonky, glitchy website sometimes, but like it, it does its job. <laughs> Like um, it, it, yeah. it's literally a free website that we can set up a tournament challenge for Hardwood on. Like, you yeah. know, yeah. Ain't, don't get much better than that for us. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, but like, you know, make an account, um, you know, we'll set up the groups and post the links. So, 
you know, that'll be on, we'll, we'll make the groups before that, but like the bracket itself will not be like Rob said, made until that Friday. Um, so, you know, you can't, you know, we won't be able to make picks just like right away, you know, when it's announced, like you can with NT2A, but we're going to try to get it out as quickly as possible for you to have time, as much time to make the picks. I mean, if you want to do research, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh well okay because it's be a lot of a lot of time but also like it don't matter <laughs> no yeah if, number one it doesn't matter and number two like like you if you want to do research you know the teams that are on the top three or four lines in terms of seating that are the teams you're usually going to pick to go pretty far so you can still do research pretty easily right i i don't i don't mean it doesn't matter because like there's no stakes there's definitely stakes it's called bragging rights it's yeah. like being right oh but, I'm the right. <laughs> and, and knocking off Rob from that perch he sits up there. <laughs> but I can't hear you guys from all the way down there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because like there's so many upsets all over the place, you know. Like it's hard oh my to predict. God. That's what I mean. So D1 I mean. so D1 was like, you know, like a lot of people, as you saw, six people picked as specific, and that's how it turned mm -hmm. out. But like mm -hmm. with D3 here, we had like a one seed go down. Who was it? It was um. They made like two one seeds. Michigan think, Tech and yeah, Michigan Tech and I I can't find it. It's right hard now. to tell. Yeah, this it's hard to tell. The yeah. Seedings don't quite make sense on this either. That's the other thing. Oh wait, was Michigan Tech a two in the division two for this one? Yeah, no. yeah, oh, yeah. Michigan yeah, Tech yeah, was yeah, the yeah. number one seed in division two in this. Yeah, they one. were two, two. Oh, I don't know. Who knows these days? <laughs> if I could type. Yeah, so Michigan Tech was a um, was a a number one seed overall, right? You can tell by the three here, and so it's not super intuitive in terms of like the what seed they are, but it makes sense in terms of if you were to count from like one to one, whatever, or like sixty four or whatever it is, right? That's where that team number would fall. So mm -hmm. Michigan Tech was a one seed. Lincoln Memorial is a sixteen seed, and Lincoln Memorial beat Michigan Tech. Yeesh. Yeah. <laughs> in round freaking one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that was like a huge upset. And then like, you know, last year in D1, I happened to pick like um, Slappy Pappy. Right. And let's just pull up my mm -hmm. bracket real quick. Um, oh, that's not that's not what I meant to do. How do I? Oh, yeah. Duh. Um, no, I have is this what it's like to follow me when I am screen sharing is it is so yeah so I picked I picked slappy Pappy and Salisbury to make like um uh, a big run. run yeah, yeah. I picked them to make a run and they actually did and they went further they went further than this yeah they actually went all the way here but like yeah um you know no, further than that technically yeah yeah they went all the way to the championship game yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so Salisbury was an 11 seed um if memory serves me right and they went all the way to yeah. to, to the championship game yeah um, but like, it's really fun in regular brackets to pick the team, this, the Cinderella sort of teams. It's even more fun in hardwood because it's people you talk to all the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's like, these are people you, you know, we'll talk about in the discord, you know, how, how crazy it is. We'll talk about it on here. I'll talk about it on here too. You know, yeah. uh, the results of the brackets. So yeah, get, just make sure to sign up and get, you know, join our groups when we make them. Don't worry. We'll post uh, you know, links for that when the time comes, I guess I should get on that soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. It was really fun last year. We hope we get more people, more people will be great. Yeah. Lots of people picked us to make deep runs and then your team made the sweet 16 and then Literally, got there against Lipscomb and do then not pick my team to make a deep run. My Oswego team made the second round, but my Santa Clara team, where are they? Freaking lost in the first round of stupid ass North Georgia. I was so pissed. Who, who I had no now? Who you're I had not no, beating. Yeah, I had no reason to lose them. Okay. And I would have beaten Eckerd and I would have beaten Louisiana Lafayette. You whatever. would have beaten Eckerd? I don't know about that. I would have beaten Eckerd, okay? I don't know about that. I do know about that. That's what I'm telling you. Listen, do not pick my team to go far. All right. They will disappoint, even if do not the pick top either of us. Overall seed. We are podcasters. That doesn't mean we know what the hell we're doing in this damn game. I don't know anything about this game. <sighs> um, is there any recruiting strategy? We did not really talk about recruiting strategies that much. Well, um, hold on. One thing I want to share before we talk about that. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I set up on on 
I posted in the Discord. The house. Yeah, I posted in the Discord that we just set up a, like a tournament challenge for the men's tournament challenge. And because yesterday and today were the first or the first four games, then you could still go ahead and enter a bracket, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so like, here's me, of course, obviously. And then here's some other people. So Caleb Henry, Washington, AW, Mississippi, obviously. Bridger, who's Huntington. Ben Jammin in the house. That's you. Toledo. It's, it's a Bloons reference in case you didn't. Know. I, no clue. And then Anonymous. So, like, we have a couple people playing, but like, if you want to get in on the bracket fun, go ahead and join. You know, this is actually really cool because I recognize all of these people from the Discord. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's the community that I was looking for when joining this game and joining the Discord and starting this podcast, really, you know? Yeah. I mean, honestly, we knew that some of the most dedicated people in the discord were going to be the ones that were going to join us in terms of like our podcast and stuff. So, yeah. 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 But this is like, you know, this is just another cool way for us to interact. And I, I, the group motto, the less exciting tourney bracket by far, because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, sure. We all want to watch the NCAA tournament and think it's fun and all that shit. But like, I care more about the freaking hardwood tournament more than I do the stupid NCAA tournament. Do you care about more, more about the like tournament success than like, Almost anything. <laughs> Dude, I was at I was at UCI's first ever NCAA tournament win in program history last year, right? When we beat mm -hmm. Kansas State in San Jose. And I I might get more excited about a Santa Clara run in the stupid hardwood freaking tournament than I would be about being at UCI's first ever tournament win. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's rings true for me too. Like I was on the I, I stormed the court when Cal won its uh, Pac-10 championship in like 2010. Did you really start like, the court? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> dude, you know, I was like, I was like, you know, right there with Mark Curry, Sanders, Friesen, and, and Jerome Randall, <laughs> my boys, Patrick Christopher. Um, oh, but, goodness. but you know, you're right. Like, I might be more excited if one of my teams makes a a, a run. You know, wins. When's a title mate maybe oh you know oh god maybe. why don't we why don't we try getting past the sweet 16 before we talk about winning titles true i mean you're right you're right about that focus on the goals focus on the one game at a time one um, game at a time yeah but yeah um i think we talked a while honestly i don't know if we could talk about recruiting strategies we'll get into it another time um, you know, we gave a little a little hint of what we could talk about, though. Um, we have I, I have plenty more. Trust me. <laughs> so our midweek podcasts are going to sort of be like, you know, a chance for us to talk freely about stuff and be a little bit more loose with it. And then our weekend podcast, the Sunday podcasts, are going to be like, you know, heavy in terms of recapping results and looking at competitive conferences and stuff like that. But yeah, like, we kind of did that today, though, a lot. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we looked at some of them, but we're going to definitely talk about more when it comes to Sunday. Well, right? yeah, because it's going to change by so much, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like our midweek podcasts are going to be pretty, you know, like we're going to get some guests on in the future. Um, yeah, yeah. We really need to get on top of that. Um, Sorry. I mean, we just, we're busy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. We've both been really busy with our personal lives, our professional lives and stuff. So, um, but we what really, personal life? I don't got no personal life. I said professional. So it's hardwood. Hardwood is my, I said professional. Personal life. Yeah. Can we, can hardwood generate like fake girlfriends too? <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. President oh, no. Guard 710 and his wife. Oh no. Guard 711. <laughs> oh no, you killed me. I just spilled beer on myself. Oh no, you killed me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We leave need to a wrap comment this up. if you agree. Yeah, leave a comment if you agree. If, if you Hardwood should to. generate fake wives for your presidents. Oh, goodness gracious. All right. God. I think we need to wrap this up. All right, man. I Good need to talking. Eat food because I'm feeling some kind of way. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good talking, man. <sighs> All right, Hardwood Universe. This is the Total Podcast Idiots checking out. Catch, for, catch us on Sunday talking about all the important updates that happened. See ya. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Oh, I hit stop.